So this question we're looking at applying differential equations to an electrical circuit application. So for the electrical circuit shown, uh, the V in input voltage is equal to 24 uh, volts. So if the circuit is switched on at t is equal to zero, we need to show that the differential equation describing the current over time t is given by this one here. So we have two kind of options in terms of developing differential equations for electrical circuits. Um, the two equations we have are KVL and KCL. So KVL is Kirchhoff's voltage law. This is where we look at a mesh and we say that the sum of the voltages in the mesh have to be equal to zero. So any voltage gained, all right, for example, through a voltage input has to be lost through other components. So here we would have a loss across the resistor, inductor and capacitor. The other option we have is KCL, um, which is kind of similar, except it's looking at the currents um, at a particular node. So for this one, what we know is that if we pick a node, the current coming into that node has to be equal to the current coming out of that node. Now for this particular question here, the one that we're going to want to pick is um, KVL. All right, the reason is we are given an input voltage. All right, and we're going to be able to um, quantify the voltage dropped across each of these components in terms of the current I, all right, which is what this equation is. Uh, if we were to try and pick KCL, um, it wouldn't be as useful to us because we'd have to pick a particular node to um, sum at, and all we'd really find is that the current through the resistor has to equal the current through the inductor, which would then equal then the current that comes out of our um, source. All right, and it's really not going to be particularly useful for trying to develop this equation that we see. So KVL it is. All right, so the other thing I'll just quickly mention as well is that I've popped down here kind of the cheat sheet for um, all of the equations for voltage and current based off the component that you have, um, which should make our lives easier when we go to substitute. All right, so applying uh, KVL, all right, the equation is sum of voltages is equal to zero uh, within this mesh. So the input that we have is going to be V in, and since it's an input, I'm going to make it positive. And then we're going to drop across these three other components. So we've got to drop across the resistor, inductor, and capacitor. So since they're drops, I'm going to put them in as minuses. All right, and if you wanted to, you could kind of mark these into the diagram. All right, it's just the drop across these individual components that we're uh, quantifying. All right, so now that we've got this equation, right, we want to convert it into something that's in terms of the current uh, I that we're looking for. So how we can do that is if we look at this table, we can see that we can write voltage in terms of current for each of these components. So that's what I'm going to do. Now VN, there's not much I can do about that at the moment, so I'll just leave it. VR, all right, that's across a resistor. So resistor, look in the table here, it's equal to the current multiplied by the resistance. Now, I guess this is in, in a way applying our Kirchhoff's current law, but basically what we're gonna find is that the current through all of these is just gonna be equal to I, all right, since we have no branching or, or anything else. So that means that we can write VR as being equal to the resistance R multiplied by the current I, all right, or IR. If we look at our next component, it's an inductor. Again, we know the current running through it is I. So if we look at our table, it's going to be this equation. L is the inductance, um, and it's just proportional to the rate of change of current over time. So minus L di on dt. All right, the last one, it's voltage across a capacitor. So again, looking through our table, we want to write voltage in terms of current. So substituting this in, and this is plus VO. All right, and I'm going to bracket all of this off because all of this is VC and it's equal to the zero on the other side of the equation. Now, if we look back up at what we're aiming for, all right, this one looks a bit neater and we can see that it's got no integrals in it. If we look down here, we can see we do have an integral um, in the equation. So our goal is probably going to be to get rid of that integral. And how we undo that is if we take a derivative of an integral, they end up canceling out. So just before we do that, what I might do is just expand out this bracket. So it's going to be minus 1 on C times that integral, and then minus VO is equal to 0. 
All right, so we said we want to get rid of this integral. So if we take a derivative, and we can see the integral with respect to time. So if we take a derivative with respect to time, they should cancel out. So I'm going to pop it out the front here, d on dt of all of this. And technically, we should be taking the derivative of what's on the other side of the equation here as well. So d on dt. But since it's zero, the derivative of zero is zero. So it's going to be a little boring. All right, so when we go through and take this derivative, what we need to think about is what changes over time and what is constant over time. Now, I would suggest the only thing in this equation that's going to be changing over time is going to be the current i, okay? We have v in, it was given to us. Um, it was a constant of 24 volts, okay? So that means that this is just going to be the derivative of a constant. We'll pop it in now, which would be zero. We've got i, which we said was changing, and r is the resistance. So that's not changing over time. It's just a set value for the component. So if we take the derivative of this with respect to time, I'll leave the negative r out the front, and we're going to end up with the rate of change of i with respect to time. If we look at the next one, again, l is just a constant. That's the um, inductance of the component. Um, and if we take the derivative with respect to time of current, this is going to end up becoming two derivatives. So it becomes looking like that. All right, if we move on to the next one, again, C, that's the capacitance of our component. It's not going to change over time. So I'll leave this as just the constant out the front. And then we're taking the derivative of an integral with respect to the same um, variable. So they're going to cancel out, and we're just going to be left with the I here. All right, the last one here, VO. All right, this came from our inductor uh, equation. And um, sorry, it came from our capacitor equation, this one here. Uh, the VO. This is the voltage that your capacitor has stored at the beginning of time. Now we were told that our circuit was only switched on at t is equal to zero. All right. So what we can assume is that uh, this capacitor didn't have any stored current um, at that point in time. Sorry, any stored voltage at that point in time. So if I make that assumption, VO is going to be zero. So if I take its derivative, it's also going to be zero. So I'll put in a minus zero here. So the, you see, uh, we said the derivative with respect to time of zero was also zero here. So what we can do is just kind of make this look a little bit nicer. So I can get rid of all the zeros and we can see that everything else is negative in the equation. So if I times everything by negative one, they should become positive. So I'll get positive di on dt, um, positive of this and positive of this. All right, so this is my equation. If I go back and look at what I was aiming for, it looks very similar. So all that's different is that the zero is on the left-hand side and these have put, been put in order um, of their um, highest power derivative um, downwards. So if we just do that as our final step, we've shown then that uh, we've got the same equation to describe this circuit. Cool. So that would be my final answer to the question. So that's all there is in terms of this video, and I'll see you in another one.